Yo, Langdale Avenue, that's where we are. My name's Saul. I've lived here for 17 years. This street's nice, it's just all grannies and there's a few kids but they don't like get up to mischief too much. I just live with my parents at the moment because I can leech from them as much as I can, which means I don't need to pay tons of bills so I can save up money. We're gonna head to the shops now. The local shops, the only shop around here. There's probably people around here who just live off that shop. I don't know if anyone really calls it you save, like it's actually called. It's just, it's just kind of the shop, really. Convenience store, sell lots of booze, lots of chocolate, milk, eggs, square sausage. What else is there to really say? It's just a shop. I do buy stuff here, but it's usually when my family are like, so we are clean out of bread and milk, go to shop. And I'm not going all the way to Asda, so I come here. It's a bit more expensive. I don't have a better selection of bread. So hopefully, when I come here, the wholemeal bread is in stock. I like the wholemeal bread. You know what I wish Glasgow had? Street food. That would be so nice. I've been watching a Netflix documentary about street food, and it just looks like proper nice food. Like it's cooked, and it's not just like a hot dog or a burger or fish and chips. Like there's actual sustenance to it. I think that would be so nice. Let's find out if my family care about eating healthily. Grapes in the fridge. Good start, good start. Big block of cheese. Unquestionable. Whoa, it's a lot of hot dogs. And one big ice cream. So much bread. White bread, white bread, chocolate spread. Can you tell me what sort of food mum eats? Uh, I think she eats eggs a lot and like prawns and stuff like that. What sort of foods does Anya eat? Noodles. Noodles. <laughs> Come on, no joking. <laughs> Veggie sausages. Alright, keep going. Toast. What does she have for breakfast? I don't know. Okay, because she, she, she's always up before you? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. What does she have for breakfast? She eats yoghurt a lot, Greek yoghurt. What does she have for a snack at night time? Sometimes she eats mince pies. Mince pies, okay. You're documenting everything. Mmm, fruit. So what I noticed is, when we've got good food, we are pretty damn good at eating it. Because all of the fruit in the kitchen has been depleted. But. We're not so great at buying it in the first place. One of the biggest challenges is that there's nowhere local where you can get fresh fruit and veg. Um, there's only there's a few corner shops, a chip shop, and that's about it. So if you're wanting to buy uh, healthy groceries in an affordable way, there's nowhere you can do that locally. You need to take a taxi to get to a supermarket. The buses have gone and are being cut regularly. And so before you even begin your weekly food shop, it's, it's a 10 pounds charge. And in our community, very, very few people have access to a vehicle. Um, we're one of the lowest in the city. And so people really do struggle for that. It's a major journey and a major thought, particularly for the elderly to be able to get out and get their food. It is not a good walk. The, the streets here are very car centric, despite the fact that most people don't own a car. So it's not a particularly safe walk. You have traffic at you the whole time. Um, it's a lot of waiting at lights, waiting for cars. This part is treacherous. Honestly, you can be standing here for like five minutes, ten minutes. You should have constantly seen my cars. It's not fair. Anyway, we're at Asda now. The biggest of bunches. Avocados are extremely healthy and really caloric, but oh my goodness, are they expensive. So I should not be buying them. Jacket potatoes, honestly one of the easiest lunches you can ever have. You just put the potato in the microwave for 10 minutes, bam, done. 
these carrots will be going in a soup. Green beans for a stir fry. The reduced section. Now it's a bit iffy with fruit and veg because it's so perishable. But sometimes if you're willing to eat a whole box of fruit in one day, then it can be worth it. As you can see, all the stuff here is like loose fruit and vegetables. That's because it's cheaper to buy the stuff separate rather than buying the mixes or the packages. They are way more pricey. Although you don't need to chop them yourselves, if you just put a bit of effort in, you can save the money. Pristine eggs, for just for what knows reason. All right, you've got, to use, you've got until the 13th anyway, so. Plenty of time. These will be gone right. in one day, in my house. Will they? Yeah. Eggs are so good for you. 24 of them. If I go home without milk, I'll be cut and diced in my house. Butter is quite a tricky one because there's so many options. Just get the biggest one because we're always using butter. Bulk buy, save a little bit of cash. Beans are absolutely fantastic. And they're very cheap too. 29 pence per can. These are going nicely with the baked potatoes. All right, we've got everything now. I'm gonna go ahead and pay and get home. Tonight I'm making stir fry for dinner. So rice, soy sauce, and a bunch of vegetables. I think for many people, they're very scared of experimenting with food. If you want to get your kids fed, you want to feed yourself, you want to go with what's safe. When you feel that um, there are less things that you can control, it's not a time to experiment. And so when you've got such a limited budget, uh, then the thought of picking up something unusual, it's too much of a risk. Cooking up the onions and the garlic right now. And we're just going to chuck in the rest of the vegetables. The sweet corn. Stuff fry vegetable mix. The actual vegetables which I cut and the crunchy bean sprouts. We are a nation that has some of the best food in the world and that should be for everybody, not just for those that are able to afford it. Because of the way the economy has changed over the past 30 years, so many households are living paycheck to paycheck and they have absolutely no buffer. Um, they, they aren't able to save up any sort of security which means that the second that there's any shock to the system, and COVID was a huge shock to the system for everyone, um, people immediately fall into the food poverty and they're struggling to, to afford to eat. And it's really tragic because these are, these are often people who have been working their whole lives. The people who struggle the most often don't want to admit that they're struggling. We've got a very proud community here. And I, I think because of that kind of pride, we had one woman who, who said by the end of the week, she had 50 pence left. And so she would go and buy some potatoes and make chips because at least the kids' bellies would be full. Um, and so there is unfortunately still this um, struggle to provide. What we've found is that there's been a real de-skilling of our society because of things like convenience food and fast food and just the way our, our economy and our culture has developed. So a lot of people are really enthusiastic about grown food, but they need uh, the education aspect that community gardens and community projects can bring. Right across the street, this is where I live, right across the street is St Paul's Parish Church. St Paul's Youth Forum, Black Hill on Bikes, they've got so many different branches. And I'm always over there doing projects and stuff like this. They've also got a garden, a really beautiful garden, and they helped me get a little planter box as well. So I grew some beetroot, some carrots, some potatoes. So yeah, they, they fix bikes, they grow plants, they have community get-togethers and such. They make food for people on a Wednesday. Dead nice. Um, what we've seen in the garden is a lot of people have come in and started off growing something very small, like we do a tatty bag competition where you just get a wee bag to take home and grow your own potatoes. 
and that's kind of giving them the bug. Okay, we got some things to plant here in that garden. I've got a raised box here. Got some red onions, garlic, also got some shallots and normal onions. The local shops, um, all credit to them, didn't put the prices up during Covid um, and they were always stocked with stuff. However, the prices were already astronomical. If you wanted to buy an apple in this community, a single apple would cost you 60 pence. Um, our fruit and veg barra, it's 15 pence. And what's even better is we'll give you an apple tree and in three, four years time you can have your own apple. I'm going to pick one and try and eat it. Oh, and check this out. So I harvested some apples from an apple tree. Got the apple, right there. Tastes good. The potential to actually be growing food in the city and generating income and generating jobs, we could maybe address, or we could address, several problems that we're facing as a community. One is around healthy eating, one is around this enormous environmental crisis that we're finding that is intimately linked with our food production, and the other one is uh, unemployment and lack of root, roots into the job market for young people. And it has been our vision, or the community's vision, for a, a number of years to create a space where the growing can be at a, a much larger scale. Um, and what we sort of envision is having three large, almost commercial-sized polytunnels in this flat bit of ground here, um, where it will grow lots of salads, tomatoes, the type of things that normally, if you were to get them in the supermarket, they'd be shipped in a refrigerated truck from Poland or Spain or Italy. And instead of all that carbon emissions, we would be providing them here. This more hilly area would be a sort of edible forest and we'd have uh, apple trees. We'd also have just sort of hedgerow plants to encourage wildlife. And behind the school, along that area there, we have got um, a, a wooded area um, with um, immature trees and so we would look to start off with, with poultry, help to clear that and then bring the, the goats and the, the pigs into that area. There's so much potential for people to grow their own food and it's something that once people get involved in they, they usually don't give it up. It's something that's like it's really positive not just for healthy eating and for saving a bit of money in your pocket. It's really positive for your mental health. Um, it reconnects you to a sort of narrative about your food where it's not just being given to you on a plate. It's something that you've nurtured for and cared for. And it's something that's connected to a, a much wider sort of environmental and social relationship that you're taking part in. Um, and I think I would like to see, you know, everyone grow. I'd like to see every school having its own community garden or links with community gardens. I'd like to see much, much, much more healthy fresh fruit and veg produced and eaten in Scotland. Uh, yeah. <laughs>